My name is Will in 5 OLA, and today on the Lazy Susan, we've got a Heathkit SB401 transmitter, and we're going to recap it. If you don't know these rigs, this is a classic from the late 60s. They're highly collectible when they work, but getting them to work usually requires a good recap, and that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to be using Scotty's Sled Shed Component Kit. Um, this is a full recap kit. Not only has the capacitors, but it also has some diodes and resistors as well. Uh, as you'll see, each packet is marked according to the different capacitor that it replaces. For reference purposes, I've written down the numbers of each component as they are referred to in the manual. And by the way, you got to have a manual to do this. So if you don't have a manual, download one or buy one off eBay. Anyway, these are the ones we're gonna replace. C77, C403, under here is C404, which is gonna be interesting to get to. Uh, C81 is here. And we've got these two big can capacitors, 79 and 78. We're gonna replace this 22 microfarad paper capacitor. If you've done any restorations on the HW line rigs, you'll recognize this from the HW101 or the SB101. We also have some of these smaller 10 microfarad capacitors like that black one right there that we're gonna replace. There's, uh, I think, four of them on this board. And first of all, I'm gonna remove this capacitor so I have better access to this board. That paper capacitor is soldered right behind this big mama and we can't get to it unless this is removed so first thing i'm going to do is go ahead and remove this and then i'm going to attack everything on that circuit board i'm going to start out by desoldering those wires from the bottom of the capacitor and i am going to discard that two watt resistor because we're going to replace it also make note there is a diode right in there tucked away that's going to be replaced as are these two rectifier diodes up top. Those are in a parts kit that is unmarked. Some of these wires are really tucked way deep in there. So if you have a pair of long needle nose, all the better. And out it goes. Now we have easy access to this board. Let's take advantage of it. While I'm in here, I'm going to replace this 200 ohm carrier null pot. These are pretty notorious for failing, especially after 60 years. And so I'm gonna take that out, replace it with a 20 turn pot. That's what the replacement looks like. Because it has a side mounted adjustment, I went ahead and just uh, attached it to the underside of the board where it'll be easier to adjust. These are the caps we're gonna replace on that circuit board. We're gonna do that paper capacitor 106. And then these four, 103, that should say 132, 135, 137. How do you know which capacitors those are? You check the circuit board x-ray view page. 132, C135, 137. There's that paper capacitor right there. And there's C103. Some of these are going to be a little tricky to get to. But thankfully, we've got that big monster cap out of the way. If you open up one of these paper capacitors, it's, um, that's kind of a misnomer. It's, it's a paper covered capacitor, but you know, it's a standard metal capacitor with electrolytic fluid inside. If you sniff it, you can smell that electrolytic fluid starting to bleed out. This actually tests really good on the ESR meter. This is a 20 microfarad, 22 microfarad capacitor, and it's testing good at 200 microfarads or less. That's good, but you know, these contain electrolytic fluid, which has a way of stiffening up. And if the rig's not used regularly, they can harden up and explode. And you know, they're just not meant to last forever. So we replace them. I'll show you how I replace components. And there are many techniques for this, but I like to use a dental pick and I just, I hook it in where it needs to go. I've got my Lazy Susan, and so I'm gonna flip the rig around. I'm gonna find the corresponding solder pad, heat it up, and pull out from the other side. How do you know which solder pad you need? 
you consult the x-ray view. So we've got that capacitor out, but once you pull it, the hole has a way of sealing up. So I take a straight dental pick, shove it in the hole, go to the other side and just reheat it and move this around to open up that hole for the new capacitor. By the way, these things are polarized, so be sure to get the plus with the plus and the minus with the minus. And everything's installed. Now we get on to this one. This is the Packet 4C77. Looks kind of intimidating, kind of complicated. What do we do with all this? Let me show you. So just following the instructions step by step, you'll see that this has two sides. One is marked the cap side and the other is marked turret side. Okay, the turret is this little guy. So the turret side is the side where we're going to insert the turret. You've probably seen these markings on the bottom of the old school can capacitors, the half moon, the square, the triangle. Okay, so those have been reproduced on this little circuit board. There's the triangle, there's the square, there's the half moon. So according to the instructions, we're gonna insert a turret on the hole for the half moon and the hole for the triangle, just like that. And I pinched the ends on the underside just a little bit so I can solder them. I'm not gonna pinch them completely because we're gonna need to insert wires in those holes later. Once again, when soldering, be sure you don't get solder into the hole. Just solder around the outside of the base of the turret. So I'm going to flip it over to the cap side of the board. And I'm going to install this uh, spacer board. And you'll see that on the spacer board, it has the same markings. The square, the triangle, the half moon. And so I want to orient it so that these markings match the ones over here, just like that. All we're gonna do is just set it right over, get those, get those holes to line up. Like so. Man, my fingernails look nasty. We're gonna install two of these capacitors. One is at 100 microfarad and the other one is 47. According to the instructions, the 100 is gonna go into the hole for the half moon. So we're gonna, <coughs> we're gonna put the hole, the positive lead through the turret and the negative lead goes into this hole, which is the negative, as you can see from that little teeny tiny schematic right there, just like that. And now for the 47 microfarad, we're going to use the triangle. So positive goes into the turret, negative goes into this slot right here. So for now, I'm just going to solder these negative points here and here. We'll leave these for now. Okay, now time to install it and find the half moon. And just, uh, that's the 100 PF. And make sure that one is positioned like so. I'm going to temporarily unscrew and slide this terminal strip out of the way just so I have better access to the bottom of that cap. And I tell you, getting that nut on the screw is a whole lot easier with this terminal strip out of the way. There she is. And from this angle, I have a clear line of sight. So you see on the triangle turret, I've got the resistor and the black choke wire going into the turret and Wrapping around the turret is one end of that orange wire. Now I'm going to solder it. And I've got one end of the resistor soldered to the ground lug. Before I solder the turret for the half moon port, I'm going to go ahead and reattach this terminal strip because that diode end is going to have to go into that turret. And that's what it looks like when it's finished. Why is that bit of green on that turret? Well, because when I was soldering the turret, I had it on my cutting mat. C403, 
we have the negative coming in at this pin right here and the positive coming in right there. Okay, this side came out easily. This side was a little more challenging, so this resistor was like that. I just desoldered one end. Um, with these slide-in terminals, it's really easy if you have access. So now I'm just gonna heat this up and then slide out this lead. And with the help of my dental pick, that wasn't so difficult. And when reinstalling the capacitor, I'm going to be sure to consult the manual. I wanna make sure I get those positives and negatives on the right terminal pins. Couldn't be easier. Now I'm just going to reinstall that resistor where it needs to be. Bottom one looks a little more challenging. We've got the negative at pin 26 and uh, the positive here at pin 16. Um, I'm gonna just remove this one first and then remove this one and slide it out and put the new one right back in. You know, for something like this, it's really important to have good tools for close work. There we go. So you see how I, I kind of twisted this dental pick around a little for this particular operation. There we go. Actually, this one will not come out on this end because we have wires coming in through the chassis. So I'm actually pulling it out this way. Here at point 16, I heated it up, raised this jumper, and then lifted up this resistor lead, slid it in under, and then put everything back on top and soldered it easy. Once again, having good long needle nose pliers is super helpful in a task like this. And she's in. Moving on to 78 and 79. And I'm kind of taking the instructions a little out of order, but uh, as recommended, we're gonna remove C81 so that we can work in here on uh, 78 and 79. I started out by cutting this jumper wire right here. I'm gonna remove this resistor, disconnect this jumper wire, and then uh, unscrew that capacitor and toss it. Well, that's out. And now I think I'm just gonna move on to the next one and uh, get that out of there following the instructions. Keep in mind, there's a big nasty wire harness right on top of that screw, on top of that nut. So that's gonna be a little tricky. Okay, we'll start with C78. These are our materials and instructions tell us to turn this to the turret side and install a turret on the positive and minus holes. And then uh, again, we're gonna crimp the ends and solder these turrets to the board. Okay, now I'm gonna flip it over to the cap side. And uh, this is a spacer. I'm gonna align the polarities so it's got minus and minus, plus and plus. Fit it just like so. And now from this side, I'm going to slide in the leads of the electrolytic capacitor, but I'm going to keep these leads bent and not clip them just yet. There it is. And I'll tell you, as for that screw in the back it is really hard to get that nut on there good luck with that so now i'm going to replace these one two three four diodes and you'll note that i positioned this capacitor with the positive end down and it just so happens that that lead comes out right up at that point on the terminal strip so i remember when we cut that jumper there well we're going to use that as a jumper run it into the terminal strip and then install the diodes all the way down. Got them in there. Now be sure to give everything the wiggle test. Look at that. Uh-oh. Okay, C78 is all wired up. Now I'm just gonna solder. This blue jumper wire is going to go over here to C79 once we get it installed. You'll notice that on the original, there's a 500K one watt precision resistor. Uh, it's hard to find 500K these days. They usually come as 510 
or below that is 470. And uh, he indicates in the instructions, don't throw that away. Carefully desolder it, save it, and reuse it. This may turn out to be the most challenging part of this recap. Right under this wire harness, there is a screw that we need access to in order to mount this next capacitor. This wire harness is not on here lightly. It is down tight because it feeds right into this hole in the chassis. So there's very little wiggle room. Let's figure out how we're going to fix that. All right, first of all, I unscrewed this terminal strip and I'm going to fold it out of the way so I've got easy access. Getting the nut on there and tightening it with that harness in the way is just next to impossible. So what I'm going to do, instead of inserting the screw through the chassis this way, I'm going to run the screw in with the head on this side and run it that way. It's going to look a little different, but it's going to get the job done. I'm going to just pull that back. You see how there's the end of it right there. I'm going to insert my screw there. You can see the hole. I mean, you do have access back there. If all you're doing is inserting the screw in this direction, you can do it. And I'm pretty sure I can just get that screw on there and drop it in. And then um, I can get the head of a screwdriver in there where I would not be able to get the head of a nut driver in there. That would be really, really hard. Okay, I put together this capacitor assembly and I mounted the circuit board. Uh, I mounted this side of the circuit board so that this is nice and snug against the chassis so that I can do this little bit of surgery right in there. Set this screw inside the bottom of that terminal strip and then get it inside the hole. Okay, I've got that screw in the hole and I'm going to hold it down with the screwdriver, flip the rig on its side, and attach the nut. Wow. Ooh, what a pain. And there it is, fully installed. Also note that unlike C78, on C79 we have two jumpers. Right there and right there. That is for grounding the capacitor to the chassis. And C79 is wired up, got our new resistors in, and when I ran the red and yellow transformer wire, I actually took advantage of a hole next to the positive turret because that positive turret just had too much stuff on it, and uh, that worked. After all that, we deserve something easy. C81 goes from that point to that point, just like that. That's the end. We have a new cap assembly here. We have new caps here, 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 and then on the circuit board, we have quite a few. That was fun. If you have a Variac, it's a very good idea to bring this up slowly over a couple hours just so those capacitors have a chance to reform. And then uh, run your tests, make sure uh, all your voltages are good. That's it, 73.